Hello Saints, grace, peace, love in Christ Jesus be with all of you. I hope you're all doing well. Today's study, we're going to look at another question that comes to our ministry site today. And the question is, will a person be able to have a second chance at getting saved after the rapture? Can they get saved in the seven year tribulation period? Okay, first things first, I assume when they say seven year tribulation period, they're talking about the 70th week of Daniel. The period of seven years that comes after the body of Christ is taken from the earth, known as the rapture. And I believe the study comes at a most critical time because the rapture is at hand. It is imminent, folks. Something huge happened today on December 23rd, 2016. The United Nations has just passed a resolution that will split Israel in two. The Obama administration has for the first time not vetoed the splitting up of Israel. And this is a huge event, saints. Huge event. Israel is being backed into a corner that's going to cause the fulfillment of major prophecies. That's why I think the rapture is at hand. And this study is critical because we're going to look at what's going to happen to those people that missed the rapture and enter into Daniel's 70th week. And we're going to look at the question, will those that miss that rapture have a second chance to get saved? Now, the answer to this question lies within the understanding of dispensations, the different uh, administrations of our Lord God. In order to understand dispensations, we need to rightly divide so we can understand how God has been dealing with mankind over the past 6,000 years. In 2 Timothy 2.15, Paul writes to Timothy and he says, Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Now quickly, let's go over some basic right division and let's see how God has been dealing with mankind over the past 6,000 years. There are seven different dispensations or administrations. And the first one is called innocence. This is where Adam and Eve started out. The second one is conscience. Again, we see Adam and Eve and mankind. The third one is human government. That's where Noah was with the world. The fourth one is promise. There we see Abraham. Isaac and Jacob and the nation of Israel and the fifth one is called law and this is where Moses was with the nation of Israel and they were attempting to usher into the uh, usher in the kingdom and the sixth one is grace this is where Paul was introduced this is where Paul got saved and the body of Christ was created it was a mystery it was a secret held within our Lord God before the foundation of creation and the seventh dispensation that is soon to come is the kingdom dispensation this will involve the nation of Israel it'll involve the fulfillment of all the prophecies and the second coming of our Lord Christ Jesus and also ushering in the millennial reign now in 1st Corinthians 9 17 it reads for if I do this thing willingly I have a reward but if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. Ephesians 1.10 That in the dispensation or administration or time period of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. In Ephesians 3.2 if ye have heard of the dispensation, the administration, again, a period of time of the grace of God, which is given me to you word. This is Paul speaking, saying that God had given him a special gospel, the gospel of grace, which was under a different administration or different dispensation. All right. So Colossians 1 25, 26, whereof I am made a minister. This is Paul speaking again, according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me. This is Paul for you 
to fulfill the word of God. Now when he says fulfill the word of God, it is saying that the gospel of grace was a fulfillment of that new dispensation that completed the word of God, the Bible, okay, God's word. All the entire Bible was finished through Paul. Paul wrote 13 books, Romans through Philemon, and uh, over a 30 year period, he preached and taught the gospel of grace. In verse 26, even the, the mystery which had been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. Now, looking back at the dispensations chart, okay, that contains just the nation of Israel and not Paul's uh, mystery gospel of grace. Notice on this illustration here that we're not in it. The body of grace is nowhere to be found. We don't see the apostle Paul in here. What we see here is what would have happened if, if the nation of Israel would have accepted Stephen's prophecy that the kingdom was coming that Jesus Christ was their Messiah if they would have accepted that Jesus was the Messiah then our Lord would have brought in the earthly kingdom the kingdom of heaven and it would have fulfilled the prophecies in the Old Testament and also in the four Gospels and we see a little bit of that in Hebrews through Revelation and also in Daniel 70th week you see, Daniel's 70th week is a, was a prophecy given to the prophet Daniel. And you'll notice that Daniel's 70th week is also what we know as the book of Revelation. It was a revelation given to John. And what John saw was a detailed, a more detailed view of what the prophet Daniel saw. Okay, But they're both the same story. They're both the same time period. And it's important to note that even if we didn't exist, even if the gospel of grace did not exist, even if Paul never existed, the nation of Israel would have been in the book of Revelation, the time period of Daniel, and they would have fulfilled all those prophecies with the Antichrist, with the seven angels, and, and so on and so on and so on. That, that the whole thing would have happened even if we weren't there. It would have happened anyway, regardless. Okay? So, because the nation of Israel rejected Stephen's message, uh, and because they rejected Jesus Christ as their Messiah, we see God do a new thing through the Apostle Paul. And the Apostle Paul received the gospel of grace. It was a mystery. It was a secret that he received from Jesus Christ himself. And this mystery gospel, the gospel of grace, we know now is a 2000 year period. Okay? And so it's kind of like God pressing pause back when they stoned Stephen and God ushers in this secret that he that he kept secret, he reveals it to Paul, and for 2000 years the nation of Israel's program is on pause. And once the rapture happens, God goes back to where he left off with Stephen, he presses play, and then we see Daniel's 70th week commence. So the short answer to our question, will people still be able to be saved after the rapture? People will not be able to be saved like we're saved today, by grace through faith alone. The only way a person is going to be reconciled to God after the rapture takes place, it's going to be exactly the same way that it was before the gospel of grace, before the creation of the body of Christ, before Paul's gospel. Let me ask you a quick question. For those of you that think the rapture is going to happen in the middle or at the end of Daniel's 70th week, I want you to think about something real quick. If you understand dispensations, just a little bit of it, if you understand just a little bit of dispensations and you understand that today we're in a dispensation of grace, meaning today we get saved by faith, believing who Jesus Christ is and what he did for us on the cross, the burial, the resurrection and, and, 
and so forth. Okay, the gospel of grace. This is the way we're saved today, right? Now, I want you to think about this. There's never been two different dispensations, two different programs, two different administrations, or two different gospels on the planet at the same time. This would be utter confusion for everyone involved. God has always ended one administration or dispensation. He's always ended one gospel by a testament or a testator. And in order to end a testament, there has to be the death of a testator. And then we see him, uh, God start a new administration for mankind. Never do we see two at the same time. So why would God change or suddenly change things in Daniel's 70th week? How can there be salvation by faith through grace alone for some people like us today and then another totally different gospel to reconcile with the, for people to reconcile with God for a whole different group of people? You'd have two gospels on earth at the same time and it's never been done before. And it wouldn't make sense for God to suddenly confuse things and start something new like that. He's not the author of confusion. So if you understand this simple truth, then you can see why the rapture has to happen prior to Daniel's 70th week. That's just one reason why it has to occur first. The dispensation of grace must come to an end first. Then the dispensation of the kingdom faith plus works, repentance and the laws, the messianic laws more specifically, uh, the laws that will involve going to Israel annually to take part in the feast and so on. These are called the messianic laws when Jesus Christ is on earth and they're put in place for the nation of Israel once again, picking up where God leaves off with the prophet Stephen. Okay, Paul's gospel, the gospel of grace, salvation by faith alone without works, without the law, cannot mix with salvation by works with the law. Does it make any sense that all of a sudden we would have to add two, uh, two gospels at the same time? The gospel of grace, dispensation, and then all of a sudden, in order to be saved, you have another gospel going on at the same time. It makes no sense. So that's why God will end our dispensation of grace by using the mystery of the harpazo, the rapture, the catching up of the body of Christ. Then the next dispensation will commence. So after the rapture takes place, who's going to preach to the world if we're all gone, if all the believers are gone? And that's a great question. The 144,000 the two witnesses and the remnant saints are going to be preaching the same thing that John the Baptist was preaching. He was saying, Behold, the kingdom is at hand. Repent and believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Plus, we're told in the book of Revelation that God will send angels to preach where the rest couldn't get to. For example, in the middle of the Amazon jungle, the islands, in the middle of the Pacific or the Atlantic Ocean, in the middle of nowhere, etc. Look here at Revelation real quick. Revelation 14, 6, 9. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Now keep in mind, this is during Daniel's 70th week. Saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him. For the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark on his forehead or in his hand. Okay, notice what the angels are not preaching here. Why aren't they preaching Jesus Christ? It was the Son of, of God in the flesh. He died, 
was buried and rose again on the third day. Believe this to be saved. How come they're not preaching that? They're preaching something completely different. The reason why the angels aren't preaching our gospel today, the gospel of grace, is because the gospel ended with the rapture of the body of Christ Jesus. And a new gospel began. Another clue that the rapture cannot be in the middle or in the end of Daniel's week. But it must be at the beginning before these angels begin to preach another gospel entirely. The Gentiles who are alive after the rapture are going to be placed under the spiritual authority of the nation of Israel. Gentiles will have to go through Israel to be reconciled with our Lord God. Now that's the short answer. Now if you want to learn the specifics, hang around. We're about to take a journey through the Word of God, a journey through Daniel 70th week, the second coming, plus more. You see, once the rapture happens, the dispensation of grace comes to an end. No longer will people be saved by grace through faith. The, the chance to be saved like we're saved today will be complete, finished. The fullness of the Gentiles will be made complete. And God will go back to the dispensation that the nation of Israel was in prior to killing the prophet Stephen and rejecting Jesus as their Messiah. So what dispensation or administration were they in before Jesus revealed the gospel of grace to the Apostle Paul? Well, they were in the dispensation of the Mosaic Law, Moses, the laws of Moses. And we know that as the dispensation number five, the fifth dispensation before ours. And the kingdom was at hand. They had to follow the laws of Moses. They had to repent. And they had to believe that Jesus Christ was their Messiah. And we know they were doing well with at least part of the dispensation prescribed to them. But that's the problem. They were doing too well under the law. So well, in fact, that they were blinded by the laws and they couldn't see that Jesus was the prophesied Messiah. They missed the most important part. So they kill their Messiah Jesus and we see God give them yet another chance to repent and believe. God sends them the prophet Stephen to proclaim that Jesus was in fact their Messiah and yet again they fail and they kill Stephen. Now after they kill Stephen, God puts a hold on a dispensation of law the kingdom and he begins to reveal a secret that he had kept a, a mystery a secret since the foundation of creation God reveals this mystery the secret to a, a man named Paul the mystery gospel of grace how do we know the gospel of grace was a mystery Paul tells us over and over that the dispensation of grace was a secret revealed to him by Jesus Christ himself in Romans 16 25 now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel in the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began in 1st Corinthians 2 7 and 8 but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory which none of the princes of this world knew for had they known it they would have been crucified they would not have crucified the Lord of glory in Ephesians 3 5 which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit Galatians 1 verse 11 and 12 but I certify you brethren that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man for I neither received it of man neither was I taught it but by the revelation of Jesus Christ so with that in mind everything outside of what was revealed to Paul was not part of the mystery those were all prophecies to Israel so going back to Stephen they killed the prophet 
that God sends to the nation of Israel, giving Israel one last chance to repent and believe that Jesus is their Messiah. They kill Stephen and God pulls back and he stops the dispensation of the kingdom temporarily. And we see here at this point that the Jews are temporarily blinded and God turns his attention to the Gentiles. In Romans 11:25. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And there's the rapture. The fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Blindness will be lifted after the rapture. God temporarily stops dealing with the nation of Israel and he starts the next dispensation with the Apostle Paul the dispensation of grace and that's where we're at today but when the rapture takes place the body of Christ is removed from the earth and with our removal will come the removal of the dispensation of grace now God goes back to where he leaves off with Israel when they killed the prophet Stephen and for back for, for lack of a better phrase God presses the play button and starts fulfilling the dispensation of the kingdom once again. Now keep in mind, the reason why God has to start the dispensation of the kingdom once again is because the prophecies which he gave about the nation of Israel inheriting the earthly kingdom must be fulfilled. All the prophecies involving the nation of Israel must be accomplished because whatever God speaks always gets done no matter what no matter how long it takes it'll be done accordingly if God didn't go back to dealing with Israel if he didn't restart the dispensation of the kingdom then none of the prophecies in the Old Testament or the four Gospels would ever be fulfilled so he has to go back where he leaves off with Stephen to finish what he started so once we leave in the rapture so does the method of salvation salvation by faith alone it also leaves and now the world goes back to the dispensation of the kingdom in order for for people to be reconciled to God in the dispensation of the kingdom or after the rapture they're gonna have to do exactly what they were doing before the Apostle Paul comes into the picture people will have to follow the messianic laws they're gonna have to repent they're gonna have to believe that Jesus is the prophetic Messiah who's gonna establish the earthly kingdom for Israel they're gonna to have to worship Jesus at the designated yearly feast plus more as we're gonna learn a little in a little bit so now notice what I said for for Israel this is for Israel okay the kingdom but during the dispensation of grace before Paul before the gospel of grace the Gentiles were left out of the picture God was dealing solely with the nation of Israel and the Gentiles were way down on the priority scale we see this when Jesus tells them the reason he came in the first place if you read Matthew 15 in verse 22 and behold a woman of Canaan Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him saying have mercy on me O Lord thou son of David my daughter is grievously vexed with a devil but he answered her not a word Jesus didn't say anything to her and his disciples came and besought him saying send her away for she crieth after us they wanted to get rid of her but Jesus answered and said I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel then came she and worshiped him she worshiped him okay that's that's a clue that Jesus was indeed in the flesh he's God in the flesh he was allowing her to worship him then came she and worshiped him saying Lord help me but he answered and said it is not me to take the children's bread in other words Israel's uh, blessings and to cast it to the dogs which the dogs were the the uh, goyim which means the Gentiles another word for Gentiles is goyim which is, which is dogs okay and she said truth Lord yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table then Jesus answered and said unto her O woman great is thy faith but it be it unto thee even as thou wilt and her daughter was made whole 
from that very hour. You see, her faith is what helped her. Her faith, her believing who Jesus was by worshiping him, she was saying that I believe you are God in the flesh. And Jesus knew that. So he considered her faith great. You see, the whole reason why Jesus came to fulfill the prophecies made about the nation of Israel, he, he didn't come for the Gentiles. He only came to be the Messiah to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, the nation of Israel. And we know the rest of the story. The sheep of Israel rejects Jesus. So then, then he turns to the Gentiles under a new gospel which was kept secret. He reveals the mystery of this gospel to the Apostle Paul. So after the rapture, the method of reconciliation with God changes from salvation through faith alone back to repenting, laws, and belief. So what about the Gentiles under the dispensation of law? How are the Gentiles going to be reconciled with God? And so forth. Now, under the dispensation of law, the Jews had to follow all the laws that God established for them through revealing the laws through Moses. Then Moses handed the laws down to the priesthood. So basically, the Jews would follow the laws and of course they would fall short continuously failing you know they 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 failed to follow it 100 percent of the time and because they missed the mark the jewish priesthood would sacrifice animals once a year at the temple to pay for their sins the the sins of the nation of israel for one more year it's important to understand that although they sacrifice these animals constantly this didn't save them like we're saved today under grace it was a temporary salvation we have a permanent salvation the reason why God gave the Jews laws to follow wasn't to save them on the spot but the laws were given to them to show them that they would always continuously fall short these laws revealed just how sinful they were it revealed to them that they would need a savior a, a permanent savior to help them and God was setting he was setting up the coming of his son Jesus Christ who would be the final atonement for all their sins now today in the dispensation of grace our sins were paid for by Jesus Christ shed blood once and for all he paid for all our sins on the cross he was buried and he rose again on the third day when our Lord Jesus died and was buried he took our sins with him into death and he paid them in full and when our Lord rose from the dead he rose in righteousness in victory and today it's his righteousness his righteousness that covers us at all times it's by his righteousness that we're made righteous not our own righteousness but his when our Heavenly Father looks at us, He sees His Son's righteousness clothing us and we're given His Holy Spirit as a down payment until we're raptured and we get glorified bodies. Now again, this sacrificing animals was a type of blood atonement that we come to fruition one day in the future through our Lord Jesus Christ when He shed His blood on the cross, being the last and perfect Lamb to be sacrificed for the world's sins. So what about the Gentiles well the Gentiles had to place themselves under the spiritual authority of the Jews this is what's called proselytes the proselyte is a Gentile who converts to Judaism and he gets circumcised and he follows all the laws and he places the Jewish priests over themselves in authority spiritually okay a simple way to think about this if you know how the Catholic Church works today, it's very much like it was for the Gentiles back then under the dispensation of law. You see, the Catholic Church today is practicing the dispensation of law without realizing it. Salvation through works and obeying laws. Catholics, they, they place the priest and the Pope over them in spiritual authority, making them the mediators between man and God. Just like the proselytes had the Levitical priesthood over them in authority. 
You see, the Jews put Levite priests over them, making them mediators between man and God. God's word has something to say about placing man between you and God in spiritual authority. Look at Matthew 23, verse 8. But be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. And call no man your father upon the earth. Now, the word father here isn't speaking about your dad. It is speaking about placing man as your spiritual father. Okay? A mediator between you and God. So it says again, And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. So Catholics believe that if they confess their sins to the priest, they'll be forgiven after they do some type of works, or they say a number of prayers, then their priest absolves them of those sins. Now recently I read online that uh, the Pope gave permission to the lower priest to absolve all abortions giving the priest spiritual authority to forgive the sin all abortion sins again taking the, the position of mediator from Jesus Christ and giving it directly to man on the earth so for the Gentiles under the dispensation of law their mediator was the Levitical Jewish priesthood they couldn't go straight to God, nor did God deal with them one-on-one -on -one either. God only met with the Jewish priests inside the temple. So keep in mind that they were still doing this all the way up to when Jesus revealed the gospel of grace to the Apostle Paul. So we see that even after the rapture, the method of reconciliation with God will be different. No longer will the Gentiles or the Jews be able to be saved by faith alone through grace. And now they enter the period known as Daniel's 70th week or, or commonly called the seven year tribulation period. See, John's vision in the book of Revelation was a detailed play by play of the prophecy given to the prophet Daniel as I said earlier. So we're given lots of details about the events that are going to take place. Once the body of Christ is removed in the rapture and the dispensation of grace comes to an end. Jesus reveals something important in the book of Matthew. He reveals how bad this time of trouble will really be. Look here at Matthew 24 in verse 4 through 31. We're going to read the whole thing. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes, and diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall be many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of the house, neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes, and woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days, but pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day, for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, 
Here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before, wherefore, if they sh shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heaven to the other. In Mark 13, verse 19 to 20, For in those days shall be affliction, such as was not from the beginning of the creation which God created unto this time, neither shall be. And except that the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh should be saved. But for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen, he hath shortened the days. Now, we're going to look at the vision of the Apostle John. Now, when John's imprisoned on the island of Patmos, and uh, our Lord Jesus reveals a play-by-play -play of the prophecy given to Daniel. And our Lord explains with more detail of what he he mentioned to the little flock in the verses that we just read in Matthew and Mark, okay, before his crucifixion back in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Now, in Revelation 6, verse 1, And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. And when he opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death. And hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. Now, I'm not sure if you guys picked up on this or not, but did you know that our Lord Jesus actually revealed the seals in Revelation before he revealed them to John. Jesus actually reveals the seals in order to the little flock when he was telling them about the order of events that would take place in the day of the Lord. Notice uh, in, in what we just read back in Matthew 24, look at 24 verse 4 and 5, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Now look at Revelation 6, verse 1 and 2. And I saw, when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow. And a crown was given unto him, and he went forth, conquering and to conquer. In Matthew 24, 6, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things 
must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Now, look at the second seal. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that set on to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. Now, Jesus, in Matthew 24, is going to reveal the third seal in Revelation for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places all these things uh, all these are the beginning of sorrows now here we see it in Revelation and when he opened the third seal I heard the third beast say come and see and I beheld and lo a black horse and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand and I heard a voice say in the midst of the fourth in the four beasts say a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny and see that's that's where the famine is and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine now Matthew 24 verse 9 and 10 then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another and again in Revelation 6 7 and 8 and when he opened the fourth seal I heard the voice of the fourth beast say come and see now here we're in the middle of the tribulation period okay at the where the the Antichrist comes to power and I looked and behold a pale horse and his name that sat on him was death and hell followed him and power was given unto him over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth now notice the first three seals happen in the first half of Daniel's 70th week and Jesus calls these the beginning of sorrows a quick note here it, there are people out there teaching that the first half of Daniel's 70th week are, is going to be peaceful because the Antichrist is going to sign some type of peace deal or some peace agreement and so on. Now first, we just read what Jesus calls the beginning of sorrows. It's anything but peaceful. And I've shown you that the beginning of sorrows is what's traditionally called the birth pains. And there's no peace here at all. At all at all. And second, nowhere in the King James Version Bible does it say that the Antichrist signs a peace deal with anyone? This again is traditions of men being taught. And I say this because some people believe that they're going to be able to figure out who the Antichrist is when they see a man sign this massive seven-year peace deal with Jerusalem and the world. It's just not going to happen. God's word says that the Antichrist will confirm the covenant with many. The word confirm here means to strengthen or to make stronger it already exists Daniel's Daniel 9 27 and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease and for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate could it be that this Antichrist allows the Jews to build the temple so they can perform ritual sacrifices once again? That seems highly probable. Because it says that the Antichrist will then put a stop to the sacrifices. See, he reneges on his promises that he makes at the beginning of the seven years. So the covenant made with many is directly connected to, the, to Israel performing sacrifices once again and we know they'll be doing that because the dispensation of grace comes to an end with the rapture and the dispensation of the kingdom the laws and the sacrifices and the rituals will be reinstated just like it was back in the day of Stephen the prophet and the 12 apostles and so on this is a huge hint of how people will be reconciled to God once the body of Christ is raptured away Okay, so moving on, Jesus calls all the catastrophes that happen in the first half of Daniel's week the beginning of sorrows. And the next thing to happen is the fourth seal. 
here we're at the middle of the seven year period and it's here that the Antichrist rises he declares himself as God and at this point he goes after the Jewish remnant he is wroth with anger Matthew 24 verse 9 then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many and because iniquity shall abound the love of many uh, shall wax cold but he that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved now if you recall that the Jews in order to be saved they must endure unto the end okay that is the kingdom dispensation it is it is not the grace dispensation they have to endure unto the end in order to be saved so we look at all the way down to verse 17 let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of the house and we see this is the, the middle of the Daniel 70th week where the Antichrist is trying to chase down the nation of Israel he's trying actually at this point he's, he's trying to, to to get to the the little remnant of believers uh, that God is protecting supernaturally so we can see how our Lord Jesus actually reveals the seals of Revelation the first seal second seal third seal and fourth seal he reveals them back in uh, the book of Matthew he reveals them to the little flock before he reveals it to John so the book of John wasn't a new thing to be that was revealed to him it wasn't a uh, secret mystery revealed to John it was a revelation of a, of, a, of a prophecy God showed John through revelation again a more detailed play-by-play -play of Daniel's 70th week and Jesus says for then shall be great tribulation it's here that Jesus is talking about Jacob's trouble the last three years the worst time ever in Matthew 24 for then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time no nor ever shall be and except those days should be shortened there should no flesh be saved but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened so you see that what John saw in the vision in the, in the book of Revelation wasn't something new again it was actually uh, again a more detailed account of what the prophet Daniel was shown and also what Jesus already told the apostles the little flock so everything in Revelation is, is prophecy it's just a more detailed prophecy the book of Revelation was written for the end time saints those going through Daniel 70th week for the nation of Israel and the little remnant the little flock now I want you to notice a couple things about Matthew 24 uh, verse 21 to 22 first notice that Jesus says shall be great tribulation then he says that no flesh would be saved unless he cuts the time short then we see who just who Jesus is protecting he says but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened so we see here that God will supernaturally supernaturally protect the elect so who are the elect look at Revelation 12 6 and the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days 1260 days here we see that the elect are a small remnant of Jews of the nation of Israel the woman now look at Revelation 310 because thou hast kept the word of my patience I also will keep thee thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth the woman the elect those supernaturally protected for 1260 days are Jews a, a remnant of Jewish believers that he God will protect when they the Jews flee Jerusalem to find safety from the Antichrist so the question is if God is just protecting a remnant of believers that are Jewish the nation of Israel what's gonna to happen to all Gentiles here we see that once again 
God is going to focus solely on the nation of Israel. Just like he did in the Old Testament and in the four Gospels. Look here at Matthew 15, 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Once the rapture takes place, the body of Christ is called up, the withholder, the restrainer, is removed, and the first seal is broken, which allows the Antichrist to come to power over the entire world. In Revelation 13, 15 to 17, And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, but both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Look at verse 16. The Antichrist will cause all, all, all to receive his mark. The only ones that won't be forced are the people that God protects supernaturally. The small remnant of the nation of Israel. So the Gentiles are going to have a very rough time trying to avoid the mark of the beast. Because the beast forces all of them to take the mark. And then we read what happens to those who take the mark of the beast in Revelation 14 9 and the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice if any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever. And they have no rest, night or day, who worship the beast and his image. And whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. At this point in our study, let me ask you point blank two questions and, and you tell me if someone is going to have a chance after the rapture, if they're a Gentile. How many people got a second chance once God shut the door and sealed the ark with Noah and his family safe, safely inside? How many people made it through on the outside? Zero. Only Noah and his family were saved. No one else. The second question, how many people were saved once Lot and his family were moved safely outside of the wicked city? Zero. Only Lot and his family were saved. No one else. So why would anyone think Daniel's 70th week will be any different than Noah and Lot? Look, the small remnant of Jews that God supernaturally protects for 1260 days are the Noah's and the Lot of that day. The odds of making it through Daniel's 70th week is slim to none. The only thing on God's mind during the 70th week of Daniel is saving his elect Jews. Saving some flesh to repopulate the earth. This is about repopulation, okay? Just like he saved Noah and his family to repopulate the earth, you know, once again after the flood. The, thing, the, the, the last thing on his mind is saving Gentiles. He's been doing that for 2,000 years, folks. He's been merciful. He's been long-suffering. He's been patient. And forgive me you know, for, 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 for this phrase, but time, time's up. Time's up. Today is the day of salvation, not during Daniel's 70th week. We read in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, the rapture, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worship, 
so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And remember ye not that when I was with, yet with you, I told you these things, and now ye know that withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned, who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Matthew 24, verse 30 to 23, Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. The only reason why the remnant of the Jews, uh, they won't be deceived, is because God won't allow it. He'll prevent them from being deceived. He's not going to protect the Gentiles from the Antichrist power, the great lie that's going to cause the apostasy and the delusion. So with that in mind, what kind of chance will everyone other than the elect have? So if you're not part of the 12 tribes, if you're not chosen by God to be part of the Jewish remnant, you have zero chance of escaping the Antichrist. The mark of the beast and death and destruction, zero chance, folks. I hope you're hearing me right now. If you're, if you're of the age of accountability and you're a Gentile who misses the rapture, you'll never make it. You will not escape the Antichrist deception. You will not escape the mark of the beast. You will not escape the earthquakes, the hail, the plagues, the pestilence, the meteors, the poison water, the poison food, nuclear war, the demonic army that the Antichrist unleashes on the world. You will not escape. However, that doesn't mean there won't be any Gentiles left at the end. There will be. And here's why. You see, on average, there's 4 million babies born every year. And that comes down to about 11,000 babies a day. That's a lot of babies. And the majority of them are Gentiles. And we know Daniel's week is going to be drastically reduced. The birth rate is going to be drastically reduced. So let's say only 10% of 4 million babies are born during those 7 years of Daniel. That gives us about 400,000 babies. Half a million babies born during the 70th week of Daniel. All these Gentile babies will be virgins considered pure before the Lord. Under the age of accountability. I believe the Lord will not only protect a small remnant of Jews, but he's also going to protect a remnant of Gentiles as well. And most of them are going to be children before the age of accountability. I think Jesus gave us a huge hint concerning how many children are going to be in the earthly kingdom when he said in Matthew 19 verse 14, But Jesus said, Suffer little children, and forbid them not to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. If you understand right division, if you understand dispensations, you also understand that the kingdom of heaven here does not mean in heaven, it is referring to the earthly kingdom. It is the kingdom of heaven that Jesus Christ brings with him at the second coming and establishes it on the earth. It is the kingdom of heaven on earth, also known as the earthly kingdom. So what does Jesus say about this earthly kingdom? Suffer little children and forbid them not to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. I have a strong feeling that the 1,000 year millennium will begin with more children than adults. Millions of children. So 10 years into the earthly kingdom, you're going to see people getting married, having babies, repopulating the earth, and we read in God's word that at the end of the 1,000 year period, the population is going to be as the sands of the sea. 
billions upon billions of people once again in Revelation 20 verse 7 and when the thousand years are expired Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth Gog and Magog to gather them together to battle the number of whom is as the sands of the sea we know people are going to be living longer they're not going to be getting sick they're going to be able to have 10 maybe 20 children in each family and so on so that's going to be a lot of people especially at the end of a thousand years in Isaiah 65 verse 19 we read and I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people and the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her nor the voice of crying there shall be no more thence an infant of days nor an old man that hath not filled his days for the child shall die a hundred years old but the sinner being a hundred years old shall be accursed in other words when you're a hundred years old you're going to be considered an infant that's pretty neat and they shall build houses and inhabit them and they shall plant vineyards and eat fruit of them they shall not build and another inhabit they shall not plant and another eat for as the days of a tree are the days of my people and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands they shall not labor in vain nor bring forth for trouble for they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord and their offspring with them so on earth at the end of Daniel's 70th week there's going to be the Jewish remnant that God protected those seven years and there's going to be the kings and priests ruling with Christ Jesus so you're going to have all the Old Testament saints that resurrected including the ones who died during the 70th week of Daniel again they're all resurrected at the end and they'll be ruling over the 12 tribes which will be ruling over the Gentiles the prophet calls this tribulation Jacob's trouble we see it in Jeremiah 30 verse 7 alas for that day is great so that none is like it it is even the time of Jacob's trouble but he shall be saved out of it notice he here will be saved out of it nothing here about Gentiles whatsoever it really makes you think about who's going to be left after Daniel's 70th week again Jeremiah 30 alas for that day is great so that none is like it it is even the time of Jacob's trouble whose trouble is it Jacob who is Jacob Israel who is Israel the nation of Israel but he shall be saved out of it he is Jacob which is Israel again God is gonna save a small remnant of Jews who are part of the nation of Israel these are the elect these are the remnant there is no Gentiles again Jacob's trouble is also called the Great Tribulation once by Jesus and Matthew and twice in the book of Revelation let's take a look at these real quick in Matthew 24 21 for then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time no nor ever shall be Revelation 2 22 behold I will cast her into a bed and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation except they repent of their deeds and Revelation 7 14 and I said unto him sir now thou knowest and he said to me these are they which came out of great tribulation now here we need to understand the context look at the words which came out of great tribulation if you look at the translation of the phrase came out of okay in the Greek it actually translates to the present tense meaning coming out so what John was seeing were people being were coming out of the great tribulation they were coming out one after another not as a huge group all at one time but there were people constantly one after another being coming out of the great tribulation okay and have washed their robes so these people coming out of the great tribulation are the martyrs going through the great tribulation that are killed one after another and made them white in the blood of the lamb this last week for Daniel's people is specifically for the Jews 
Daniel's people, look here with me at Daniel 9, verse 23. At the beginning of thy supplications, the commandment came forth. And I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved. Therefore understand the matter, and consider the vision. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people, the Jews, the nation of Israel, and upon the holy city, to finish the transgression, and to make the end of sins, and to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. So what this all boils down to is this. The seven year tribulation period, Daniel's 70th week, isn't for the Gentile nations. It's strictly for Israel. God is picking up where he left off with the prophet Stephen. So what about those left behind at the rapture? Bad news. Very, very bad news for them indeed. Whatever's left after Daniel's week, 70th week, will be dealt with at the second coming when Jesus sends his army of angels down to the earth to gather the wheat and tares. The angels are going to gather the elect from the four winds and he's going to, they're going to usher them into the earthly kingdom. Remember the kingdom of heaven where all the children are? The earthly kingdom. And the unbelievers are going to be brought to where the eagles are gathered, a place of carcasses and death. In Matthew 24, 28. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. So the ones left on earth are the believers, and the ones taken are unbelievers. It's the complete opposite from what happens at the rapture. And if you want to know more about that, check my channel out. I have a video on the rapture and the second coming and all the parables and so forth. And, it, and I explain to you why the... Uh, the process at the end of the second at the second coming is reverse it is the opposite from the rapture you see at the rapture believers are taken off the earth unbelievers are left to go through daniel's 70th week at the second coming at the end of daniel's 70th week unbelievers are taken off the earth and they're brought to where the carcasses are where the eagles gather and the believers are left on earth to go into the earthly kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, to repopulate, and so on. Okay, so the population of the earth at this point is going to be very small at the end of Daniel's 70th week. Isaiah talks about the population in Isaiah uh, 24, verse 6. Therefore hath the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned and few men left Isaiah 13 verse 11 and I will punish the world for their evil and their wicked for their iniquity and I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and I will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible I will make a man more precious than fine gold even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir therefore I will shake the heavens and the earth shall remove shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger. Also another verse where we see how rare mankind is going to be at the end of the tribulation period is Matthew 24:22 and except those days should be shortened there should no flesh be saved but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened. Look at what Jesus says is saying here. The days are short to keep the elect alive. Not the Gentiles. He shortened the days to keep the elect alive. And he's supernaturally protecting the elect. Okay? So the rest of the world is gone. It's really gone. It's dead. Do you still believe there's going to be a second chance if you miss the rapture? Nevertheless, all Gentile nations remaining are going to be brought before the Lord at the throne of His glory. Matthew 25, verse 31, And these will be separated as sheep and goats, saved and unsaved. To the sheep He's going to say, Come, ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. So we know the sheep are going to be the elect, the remnant, uh, you know, made up of Israel, the nation of Israel, 
and again most likely many 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 Gentile children to the goats he will say these are unbelievers depart from me ye cursed into everlasting fire the lake of fire prepared for the devil and his angels so the earthly kingdom the kingdom of heaven on earth will begin with only saved people the sheep the believers will have earthly bodies to repopulate the earth and Zechariah tells us what they're going to be doing Zechariah 14 verse 16 and it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the King the Lord of hosts that would be Jesus our Lord and to keep the feast of tabernacles okay so it states that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the King the Lord of hosts Jesus our Lord promises that the disciples would reign over Israel look here at Luke 22 verse 29 and I appoint unto you a kingdom as my father hath appointed unto me that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel the most important thing to remember from all the information we just discussed number one make sure you're ready for the rapture so you can avoid dealing with this horrible time that's coming number two this dispensation the kingdom is a continuation from where God left off with Stephen right before the dispensation of grace through the Apostle Paul it's as if God pressed pause when they killed Stephen and after the rapture God's gonna press play again to finish his objective with the nation of Israel the woman the bride so this brings us back full circle to the question will people have another chance to get saved after the rapture yes and no let's start with why they won't be able to get saved like they are today the dispensation of grace is gone forever after the rapture salvation by faith alone is gone forever now let's see how they can be included in the earthly kingdom program the world will be under the dispensation of the messianic kingdom they will have to go through the priest system they will have to attend yearly feast they will have to obey all the Lord's laws which is works plus faith which is going to be the system for a thousand years they will have to survive the Antichrist system they will have to survive the uh, outside of those that are protected I mean that's a lot of information to wrap your head around but the conclusion is this you do not want to wait until after the rapture to get right with God it's literally gonna be impossible and, and you're gonna wish you'd been saved by faith alone when you had the chance today is the day of salvation not tomorrow not next week not next month not next year today is the day you need to get right with God if you're not sure if you're right with God stick around and watch the last eight minutes of this video it's all about salvation what you need to do right now to make sure you're not left behind when the rapture happens eight minutes can literally save you from an eternity of suffering and torment okay it can save you take advantage of it with that I hope you'll get saved today thanks for studying with me Saints and I'll see you on the next video Lord Jesus willing Music